Chapter 48 And it came to pass after these things, that one said to Yosef, Behold, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And one told Yaakov and said, Behold, your son Yosef comes unto you. And Israel strengthened himself and sat upon the bed. And Yaakov said unto Yosef, God Almighty appeared unto me at Lutz in the land of Canaan and blessed me and said unto me, Behold, I will make you fruitful and multiply you and I will make of you a company of peoples and will give this land to your seed after you for an everlasting possession. And now your two sons who were born unto you in the land of Egypt before I came unto you in, into Egypt are mine, Ephraim and Manasseh, even as Reuben and Simeon shall be mine. And your issue, that you begettest after them, shall be yours. They shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died unto me in the land of Canaan, in the way, where there was still some way to come unto Ephrath. And I buried her there in the way to Ephrath. The same is Bethlehem. And Israel beheld Yosef's sons, and said, Who are these? And Yosef said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God hath given me here. And he said, Bring them, I pray you, unto me, and I will bless them. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him, and he kissed them, and braced them. And Israel said unto Yosef, I had not thought to see your face, and lo, God hath let me see your seed also. And Yosef brought them out from between his knees, and he fell down on his face to the earth. And Yosef took them both, Ephraim in his right hand towards Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. And Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Yosef and said, The God before whom my fathers Abraham and Ishiak did walk, the God who has been my shepherd all my life long and to this day, the angel who hath redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named in them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Ishiak, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when, Yo and when Yosef saw that his father was laying his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. And Yosef said unto his father, Not so, my father, for this is the firstborn. Put your right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. Howbeit his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, By you shall Israel bless, saying, God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And he set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Yosef, Behold, I die. But God will be with you and bring you back into the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amory, with my sword and with my bow, All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Once again, we are continuing in the periods in Egypt. Uh, they, In the last chapter, they had went to the land of Goshen. They had appeared before Pharaoh. Uh, made Pharaoh aware that they had been shepherds, keepers of flock and tenders of cattle for all their lives and they had come from the land of Canaan or the land of humility to Goshen uh, we'll find to be near Joseph Joseph's the one who's going to add to and uh, Israel Israel or Yaakov was drawing near unto the day of his death and he had caused Joseph to promise when he dies to take him up out of that land of Egypt and to bury him 
what's in the cave there at Machpelah. We're going to pick it up here in verse 1, uh, sometime after this, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that one said to Joseph, Behold, your father is sick. And he took with him his two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. And it comes to pass after this, this time when Joseph swears that he will uh, take Yaakov up out of that land of Egypt and bury him in the cave of Machpelah. Uh, that his father becomes sick. He's not well, and we'll find out. Joseph takes his two sons. Uh, we can witness these two sons. Anytime we have two, we should look for to witness them. These are going to be two masculines that go forth uh, from Joseph, these ones that are add to. Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh means to cause to forget or to forget, and Ephraim are the fruitful, or even those that bear more than one fruit two and one told Yaakov and said behold your son Joseph comes unto you and Israel strengthened himself set upon his bed so now someone tells jo Yaakov though it's told to Yaakov uh, that Joseph's coming to see him Yaakov is the supplementer a supplementer somebody takes up something that doesn't belong to them uh, to take charge of it and Israel, or that's Yaakov, sits up on his bed, and he strengthens himself uh, within, and he sets up on his place of rest, or uh, even to be upright there. Three, and Yaakov said unto Yosef, God Almighty appeared unto me at Lutz in the land of Canaan and blessed me. Now Yaakov says to Yosef, God Almighty, uh, that's uh, El Shaddai, the Almighty, the Ut, that's Hashem himself, appeared unto me at Lutz. Lutz means something's growing there. Uh, later would be known as Bethel, in the land of Canaan, and that's that place of humility. For, and he said unto me, Behold, I make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will make you, and I will make of you a company of peoples, and will give this land to your seed after you for an everlasting possession. And we remember that's where the Lord gave him that blessing and promised that he would be fruitful, the same thing that he that blessing that was passed on from Abraham down says promises to make him of a company of peoples and we'll find out this is to be the nations they'll be known as 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 Israel and will give you this land your seed after you for an everlasting possession. And that is to possess that land and their children, these, these ones that would come forth after those, those ones that are born from them, would possess that land as an everlasting possession. Well, kind of think about it as that garden uh, the Lord hedged in, five. And now your two sons, who were born unto you in the land of Egypt, before I came unto you into Egypt, are mine, Ephraim and Manasseh, even as Reuben and Shimeon shall be mine. And now your two sons, these ones that come forth from you, we'll count them, there's two masculines that went forth, these ones that were born unto you in the land of Egypt, that's that place of crypts, that place of graves, before I came unto you in Egypt, that was before Yaakov had came down, we'll find out, they was born before he got there, and he's been there about 17 years, uh, so I would make the lads at least 17 or older, they are mine. Ephraim and Manasseh, even as Reuben and Shimeon, shall be mine. They are mine, Ephraim, as that's those that are, are fruitful. They're, you might say have a double fruit. And Manasseh, those that cause to forget. Even as Reuben, that's the one who's seen the sun. And Shimeon, that's the one that heard, are mine. Six, and your issue, that you begettest after them, shall be yours. They shall be called after the name of their brethren in their inheritance. And your issue, all the children that you have after this, they'll be yours. And, but they shall be called, these two, after their brethren, after the name of, after the name of Israel. That's who Shem they carry on. Seven. And as for me, when I came from Padan, Rachel died unto me in the land of Canaan, in the way. 
when there was still some way to come to Ephrath, and I buried her there in the way to Ephrath, the same as Bethlehem, uh, asked for me, and this was when he came from Padan. Padan is that elevated place. It, it was the Padan Aram at the elevated place of those exalted ones. Raquel, that's that lost Jew, we remember she died in that way uh, in the land of Canaan. That's that place of humility. Uh, there was still a little, it was be, before you come to Ephrath. That's that place of fruitfulness. And that's where he buried her. Uh, somewhere on the way to Ephrath. That's the place of fruitfulness. She never quite made it there. The same was Bethlehem. Uh, the same is that place of bread, that house of bread. That, that bread's always a little substance for your flesh. Israel beheld Joseph's sons and said, Who are these? So now Israel's going to take notice to uh, these two sons of Joseph. And he's the one that's going to add to nine. And Joseph said unto his father, They are my sons, whom God hath given me here. And he said, Bring them, I pray you, unto me, and I will bless them. So Joseph tells his father, These are, these are my two sons. These, and we'll find out Israel has taken them to himself now. Uh, they are as his two sons. And he tells Joseph, he says, uh, Bring them near, and I will put a blessing on them. A blessing is something really kind of, uh, it's like a, a word that will meet up with you later on. We kind of look at it like that. In other words, it kind of tells the truth. and uh, We'll find out. Israel was of an old age, but... It wasn't that his eyes wasn't open before they would draw dim. Ten. Now the eyes of Israel were dim for age, so that he could not see. And he brought them near unto him and kissed them and embraced them. So his eyes of Israel were dim a little bit. Uh, that's not to see too good no more. Your perceptions may be slightly off uh, due to age. Uh, age is the we'll find out brings with it though the multitude of experiences that he couldn't hardly see uh, physically and he brought them near unto him and he kissed them and he embraced them but he draws them near he kisses them and embraces them that's to accept them and to it, it's a it's a form of sharing uh part of your breath and intimate portion. Eleven, and Israel said unto Joseph, I had not thought to see your face, and lo, God hath let me see your seed also. So Israel, that's the one that contends with the mighty one. We'll find out. He contends with men as well. He said unto Joseph, uh, that's the one it's going to add to, I had not thought to see your face. And lo, now God's let me see your seed also, all these that have come forth from you. Uh, well, we'll find out. We'll be able to witness those. And, and that is uh, the face of Joseph, those things that he has made plain. Twelve, and Joseph brought them out from between his knees, and he fell down on his face to the earth. So Joseph brings them out from between his knees where his sons were say, uh, standing. Uh, and, and We'll find out that when he falls down on it with his face toward the earth, he's, this is those things that he's made, making plain to basically all the flesh. The, when they come out from between his knees, is that's those things that he had bent to they, they, um, to show the path. You might say that's what we walk with. It's kind of like. Uh, It's a a bending, uh, which of uh, a uh, flexing of ebb and flow, you might say. And it goes out and it comes back. Thirteen and Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand towards Israel's left hand, and Manasseh in his left hand toward Israel's right hand, and brought them near unto him. So Joseph now, that's he's the one that adds to took them both. 
that's his, these two sons, Ephraim in his right hand. Ephraim are those that are fruitful, those that are that bear more than one, that in his right hand, that's his strength and his work. And they was towards Israel's left hand. Now Israel, or those the ones that contend with the mighty one, they would be towards their work of, of a, that would be called a witness. And Manasseh is in his left hand towards Israel's right hand. Now Manasseh, those that cause to forget, they are in his left hand, that's his, the work of his witness, and they are toward Israel's right hand, and that would be the work of their strength. And he brings them near unto him, draws them nigh, and Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. So Israel stretches out his right hand, we'll find out, crossing them over. And he puts his right hand upon the, the head of Ephraim. That's the right hand, that's his, the strength and will find the, in his work. He lays it upon Ephraim's head. He's the younger. Uh, he's going to get the greater blessing, you might say. That's what. That's kind of what the right hand represents, that strong side. It's kind of like the dominant side. But he lays it upon Ephraim's head. And that's going to be in the, that's the understanding of, of those that are fruitful, uh, bear one more more than one fruit they are the younger they don't have as much experience and he puts his left hand upon Manasseh's head now, left hand's going to be now we'll be able to witness this work upon the understanding of those that that forget or cause to forget and he's guiding his hands wittingly he guides his works with knowledge he knows what he's doing uh, he knows Manasseh was the firstborn. That's the one who sh was going, should have inherited the birthright. We'll find out it doesn't always work like that. 15, and he blessed Joseph and said, The God before whom my fathers, Abraham and Ishak, did walk, the God who hath been my shepherd all my life long unto this day. And he blesses Joseph. Uh, the one who added to the says the God that's the power the Almighty before whom my fathers these ones I come forth from the father of many nations and the one who laughs did walk they was before the Lord that's Hashem that's the presence of those powers God hath been my shepherd that's one who tends and grazes keep watches over all my life long, every all every day and every understanding, even unto this day, even in, in this understanding. 16. The angel who hath redeemed me from all evil, bless the lads, and let my name be named in them, and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Ishak, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And this angel will find out that's the deputy, the one that had been dispatched, uh, that had redeemed uh, from all evil, uh, prepared, you might say, uh, those against that all that evil, evils, uh, the adverse effects, you might say, of the law. Let that at that deputy bless the lads, talking about the two sons, and let my name, that's the Shem, be named in them, and the name of my fathers Abraham and Ishiak, and let them grow to a multitude in the midst of the earth. And we will find that's exactly what happens. 17. And when Yosef saw that his father was laying his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him, and he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head unto Manasseh's head. Now when Joseph sees his father uh, trying to put his right hand or his, the strength of his work, the, the better of it, Upon the understandings of Ephraim, that's those are double fruited. It, he, that's not the way he intended it, and he held up his father's hand. Uh, that's his, the one he come forth from's work to take it from Ephraim's understanding or those that are fruitful and put it upon those that forgets head or Manasseh's. Eighteen and Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, 
For this is the firstborn. Put your right hand upon his head. So Joseph doesn't want the, the greater blessing to go to the lesser. So he's trying to prevent his father. And he says, put your right hand upon his head because he is the firstborn. He is the one that come forth. He would be the one who would rightfully inherit it, 19. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people. And he also shall be great, however. His younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. But his father re refused. Uh, like I said, he knew what he was doing. Uh, he did it, guided his hands wittingly. He knew how Joseph would place them and be according to tradition. Uh, it's the way things are done. And he told him, he, I know it. My son, I know it. I know how it's supposed to be. But we'll find out. Sometimes things just don't always turn out that way. Here we'll find out the younger brother. That's the one who didn't got a lot of experience. Similar in understanding. He becomes greater than the, the firstborn. His seed shall become a multitude of nations. 20. And he blessed them that day, saying, By you shall Israel bless, saying, God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh, and set Ephraim before Manasseh. And he blessed them that day in that understanding, saying, By you shall Israel bless. And this is the way it, the blessing would go from then on. Uh, that's those that contend with the mighty one to say, God make you as Ephraim and as Manasseh. And that's those that are fruitful, bearing more than one fruit, even those that cause to forget. And he set uh, those that were fruitful before Manasseh. And, Is and Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die, but God will be with you and bring you back unto the land of your fathers. And he blesses Joseph again that, and tells him he's getting ready to uh, die, in other words, to, to cease to exist in here. Well, to breathe out, he says, God will be with you. The powers, the strengths, all, all things shall be with you and bring you back into the land of your fathers, uh, the land of their sojournings even. 22, that, that's Canaan. 22, moreover, I have given to you one portion above your brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amory with my sword and with my bow. He says also, in addition to, as well as, I have given to you one portion. That's uh, the, you might say that a portion, a little portion here that's going to make a, a, a little bit of difference. It's above your brethren. Uh, it's uh, a little more than what they got, you might say, those of other understandings which I took out of the hand, as it's come forth from the work of the emetery. Uh That's those soothsayers. They, got a, they can stand up and talk in front of crowds pleasantly. Uh, got a lot of pretty words, you might say. And he took it with his sword. That was, uh, you know, that's what gave him strength. That's what, that's what, uh, it's, it's a sword is a, Shows uh, strength, authority, truth. And with the bow, the bow is something you bend in your hand. It has the ability to show strength as well. Uh, well you can look at it. Well, it's, this sword is just like the words kind of that we speak. And the bow is the, the ability to bend without breaking, well, maybe even traditions. We're going to move forward to Genesis chapter 49 turn and return <laughs>